Here now with Alex Sands and Alex, you and I know the image that you're seeing. We are glad to have you back on the God's Light channel. Not in the bustling streets of San Francisco, the glitz of Los Angeles, the grandeur of Moscow, or the romance of Paris, no dear viewers, the stage for this celestial spectacle is none other than the heart of Jerusalem itself. There in that sacred space, Archangel Michael has chosen to reveal himself in a city of rubies. Steeped in spirituality where the ancient and the modern converge where every stone tells a story. Yes, my friends, the Celestial Guardian has descended upon the ancient streets of Jerusalem. But what does this extraordinary visitation signify? And why, amidst all the cities of the world, has Jerusalem been chosen as the stage for the unfolding of divine mysteries? Before starting, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, smash that thumbs up button and press the bell to receive the latest information from Jerusalem and the world. Imagine amidst the sacred stones of the Western Wall, where prayers have echoed for centuries, where faith intertwines with history. The presence of Archangel Michael sends shockwaves AV through the ages. As Daniel 12 once said, at that time Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. Archangel Michael, with a countenance radiant with strength and purpose, stands as a beacon of hope and protection, his celestial wings spanning the breadth of heaven itself. But who is this mighty archangel, and what role does he play in the grand tapestry of human history? To understand the significance of Archangel Michael, we must first turn to the pages of the Bible where his name is etched in the annals of prophecy and divine intervention. In the book of Daniel, we encounter Michael as one of the chief princes, a celestial being tasked with guarding and guiding God's chosen people through visions and revelations. And Daniel glimpses the spiritual battles waged in the heavenly realms with Michael at the forefront, leading the charge against the forces of darkness. But Michael's influence extends far beyond the pages of ancient texts. Throughout history, tales of divine intervention and miraculous deliverance bear witness to his presence. From the exodus of the Israelites out of Egypt to the triumphs of the Jewish people in the face of persecution, Michael's hand can be seen guiding the course of human events. In the modern era amidst the tumult of wars and conflicts, reports emerge of celestial visions above Israeli armored vehicles, a symbol of divine protection amidst the chaos of battle. During pivotal moments in history, such as the Six-Day War of 1967, where Israel faced overwhelming odds, the hand of divine intervention was unmistakable, despite being outnumbered and outgunned. Israel emerged victorious a testament to Michael's unwavering protection, but Michael's role transcends mere earthly conflicts. In the prophetic visions of the end times, he is foretold to play a crucial role in the final battle against the forces of darkness. As the world teeters on the brink of chaos and upheaval, Michael stands as a stalwart defender of God's people, a beacon of hope in a world fraught with uncertainty. And so, as we journey through the depths of biblical lore and historical accounts, let us marvel at the enduring presence of Archangel Michael. Let us take comfort in the knowledge that amidst the trials and tribulations of life, we are never alone. For in the heavens above there stands a mighty warrior, a celestial guardian whose watchful eye never wavers and whose strength knows no bounds. That in the face of adversity, in the darkest of nights, let us raise our voices in praise and gratitude for the protection and guidance of Archangel Michael. For as long as he stands sentinel over the gates of heaven, we can rest assured that we are forever held in the embrace of divine love and protection. As we journey through the annals of time, we are met with a tapestry of events that speak to the divine hand guiding and guarding and guarding Israel. 
Pilgrims from the miraculous victories in wars to the seemingly inexplicable phenomena witnessed on the battlefield, the signs of divine intervention are unmistakable. One cannot help but be awestruck by the events of the Six-Day War in 1967, where Israel, facing overwhelming odds, emerged victorious against all expectations despite being outnumbered and outgunned. Israel's triumph stands as a testimony to the divine protection bestowed upon the nation, but the hand of divine providence extends far beyond the battlefield. In the aftermath of conflict, reports emerge of celestial visions above Israeli armored vehicles, a symbol of God's unwavering protection amidst the chaos of war. Israeli troops, filled with energy and resolve, stand as a testament to the divine shield that surrounds them, leaving analysts and believers alike convinced of divine intervention. And yet the story of divine protection over Israel is not confined to the pages of history. You in recent years report surface of a storm cloud with dust and rain acting as a barrier between Israel and its enemies as ISIS forces advance towards the Israeli border. The storm halts precisely at the Syrian border, unable to penetrate Israel's Golan Heights area. Many interpret this as a modern-day manifestation of divine protection, preventing harm from befalling the nation. But perhaps the most remarkable aspect of Israel's story is its resilience in the face of adversity. Despite facing over 2,500 years of scattering and persecution, the Jewish people have endured from the Babylonian exile to the horrors of the Holocaust. Israel has emerged stronger and more resilient than ever before. This resilience is a testament to the enduring faith and divine providence that have guided the nation throughout its history. As we reflect on the story of Israel, we are reminded of the words of Scripture, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people He chose for His inheritance, Psalm 33, 12. Indeed, Israel's story is a testament to the enduring love and protection of a faithful God who watches over His chosen people. Central to the concept of spiritual warfare is the role of angels, emissaries of God, tasked with protecting and guiding believers in their journey through life. The chief among these celestial warriors is Archangel Michael, whose name means in the biblical text Michael is portrayed as a powerful and formidable figure, leading the heavenly host battle against the forces of darkness. These celestial manifestations serve as a powerful reminder of the unseen forces at work in the world, guiding and guarding those who put their trust in the Lord. But angelic intervention is not limited to physical manifestations. In the spiritual realm, angels are engaged in a constant battle against the forces of evil, fighting to protect believers from spiritual attack and temptation. As the Apostle Paul writes, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Ephesians 6 12 In the face of such formidable adversaries, it is comforting to know that we do not fight alone. Just as Archangel Michael stood by the side of Israel in times of conflict, so too does he stand by the side of believers today, ready to defend and protect them from the schemes of the enemy. As we peer into the pages of Scripture, we find numerous prophecies that point to the end times in Israel's central role in the unfolding drama of eschatological events. One such prophecy is found in the book of Zechariah, where the prophet declares, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2. This prophecy speaks to the geopolitical significance of Jerusalem in the end times and the role it will play in the final showdown between good and evil. But Jerusalem is not merely a pawn in the cosmic chess match of eschatological events. It is the epicenter of God's redemptive plan for humanity. Throughout Scripture, we see God's unwavering commitment to the nation of Israel and His promise to restore them to their rightful place as His chosen people. As the psalmist writes, He who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Psalm 121, 4. This promise of divine protection extends to all who call upon the name of the Lord, but it is especially pronounced for the nation of Israel, which has faced countless trials and tribulations throughout its long and tumultuous history. In recent years, we have witnessed a remarkable resurgence of Israel as a nation and a people, from the ashes of persecution and exile. 
The Jewish people have risen to reclaim their ancestral homeland and rebuild their lives. In just 100 years, the Jewish population of Israel has risen by an incredible 7.7%, .7%, a testament to God's faithfulness and providential care. But with the promise of restoration comes the reality of conflict and turmoil as tensions mount in the Middle East, and the nations of the world align themselves for battle. We are reminded of the words of Jesus who said, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Matthew 2.4.6 These words serve as a sobering reminder of the fragile nature of peace and the inevitability of conflict in a fallen world. Yet, in the midst of uncertainty and upheaval, there is hope. The hope of Christ's imminent return and the establishment of His kingdom on earth. As believers, we are called to watch and wait, to be vigilant and prayerful as we anticipate the fulfillment of God's promises. And as we wait for the dawn of a new era, let us take comfort in the words of the Apostle Paul, who said, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 17. My dear friends, as we draw near to the conclusion of our journey through the realms of prophecy and divine intervention, I urge you to ponder the significance of Archangel Michael's appearance in Jerusalem, in the heart of this ancient city amidst the tumult of modern conflicts. The presence of this celestial being serves as a powerful reminder of God's unwavering protection and guidance over His people. They let us not be quick to dismiss such such signs as mere coincidence or superstition, but rather let us open our hearts and minds to the possibility of divine intervention in our world today. For as the psalmist declares, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Psalm 34, 7. In times of trouble and uncertainty, we can take comfort in the knowledge that we are not alone, but that God's heavenly hosts are watching over us, ready to come to our aid at a moment's notice. But our journey does not end here. It is merely the beginning of a deeper exploration into the mysteries of faith and prophecy. I invite you to continue your study and reflection, to delve deeper into the pages of Scripture and uncover the timeless truths hidden within. For as the Apostle Paul writes, all Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. To Timothy 3.16, a strange sight in the sky last night over a who caught the attention of the Bible teaches that Jesus Christ will victorious return to earth again. God's Word says the second coming of Jesus will be personal, visible, and glorious when the bells rang signaling that the final moment was. A getting closer and closer people panic and fear when witnessing a series of events Bible prophecies. In the vastness of our world, there are moments that leave us wondering. Moments that seem to whisper secrets from beyond. Could what we saw in the sky be connected to the old stories we've heard? Could it signal the return of Jesus Christ like the ancient writings say? Picture the amazement of those who saw the sky lit up with wonders. The signs are there, clear yet mysterious, making us wonder about our role in the big picture of life. In Matthew 24, 30 it says, Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and all the peoples on earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. These words make us stop and think, urging us to wake up and see the grand message unfolding before us. But in the midst of all the chaos, one question stands out. Are we ready? Are we ready to accept the truth and embrace the light that shines from above? As we look into the future through the lens of prophecy, the old words of Scripture paint a clear picture of what's to come. The return of Jesus Christ is said to be personal, visible, and glorious, a moment that will shake the very core of our world. But what about the signs that come before His return? The stories talk about wars, natural disasters, and a world in turmoil. Duh. In Revelation, it describes celestial events that signal a new beginning. Yet, even in the middle of all this chaos, there in Luke 2, 1, it tells us to stand tall and look up because our redemption is near. Even when things seem dark, there's a promise of light for those who hold on to their faith. In the big story of God's plan, angels play a special role. They're messengers from God sent to help and guide us. 
Eric, from the old stories to our history books, angels are there quietly doing their work. They're like bridges between heaven and earth, connecting us to something bigger than ourselves. Think about Hebrews 13, too, which says, don't forget to show kindness to strangers, because sometimes they might be angels in disguise. It's a reminder that angels move among us unseen, but always there. But what do angels look like? In Daniel, it talks about one angel with a face that shines like lightning and a voice like thunder. It's a powerful image that gives us a glimpse into the heavenly realm. Throughout history, there have been stories of people encountering angels in times of need. They bring comfort and guidance when we need it most. But what about the signs we see in the sky? In Revelation, it talks about the sun going dark, the moon turning red, and stars falling from the sky. It's like a cosmic event of epic proportions, but even in the middle of all this, there's a message of hope in Matthew 24, 29. It says right after those days of trouble, the sun will go dark. The moon will stop shining. The stars will fall from the sky and the powers in the sky will be shaken in the big story of life. There's a special part about creatures called angels. These angels are like messengers from a higher place sent by God to help and protect us. But what exactly are angels and why are they here? Well, according to the Bible, angels are spiritual beings made by God to keep us safe and tell us important things from Him. Even though angels have important jobs, they're still humble and follow what God says. They're powerful, but always obey God, and that's something we can learn from. But there's a lot about angels we don't understand. We can only see a small part of what they do, like it says in 1 Corinthians 13, 12. Right now we can only see a little bit, but one day we'll understand everything clearly. In the vast expanse of the heavens, there's a language spoken, a language of signs and wonders that speaks directly to the soul. But what do these celestial messages mean for us? Could they be a roadmap leading us to the greatest event in history? The return of Jesus Christ in Matthew 24. 30. It's written, Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. These words echo through time, reminding us of the profound significance of what we see in the sky as we ponder the purpose of these heavenly signs. We're drawn to the urgent call of spiritual readiness. The signs aren't just random occurrences. They are a wake-up call to prepare our hearts for the day of judgment, for the moment when Christ will return in all His glory. But how do we connect these ancient prophecies to the world we live in today? How do we make sense of the chaos and confusion that surrounds us? It's a question that demands our attention, a question that forces us to confront the reality of our existence. In the midst of wars, natural disasters, and societal upheaval, it's easy to lose sight of the bigger picture, but perhaps it's in these moments of darkness that the light shines brightest. Perhaps it's in these moments that we're given the opportunity to rise above the chaos and embrace the hope that lies beyond. And in Luke 2, 128, we're urged to straighten up and raise our heads because our redemption is drawing near. It's a message of hope in the face of despair, a reminder that no matter how dark the night may seem, the dawn is always on the horizon. As we look to the sky, let us not be filled with fear, but with awe and wonder. For in the vastness of the universe, there we catch a glimpse of something greater than ourselves, something that transcends the limits of our understanding. So let us not be complacent, but vigilant. Let us not be content with the status quo, but strive for something greater. For the signs are there, pointing us toward a future filled with hope and promise. A future where the glory of God will be revealed for all to see. So let us embrace the signs not with fear, but with faith. For in them we find the promise of a brighter tomorrow. A tomorrow where Christ will reign supreme and every tear will be wiped away. In the quiet of the night as the world slumbers. There's a whisper in the air, a call to spiritual watchfulness. It's a call that echoes through the corridors of time, reminding us of the urgency of the hour and the need to be prepared for Christ's imminent return. When Jesus appears in dreams to hundreds of Muslims, sparking a journey of faith that defies all odds, it's a testament to the power of faith and the resilience of the human spirit. These aren't just dreams. They're moments of divine intervention touching lives in ways we can't comprehend. 
Think about it amidst the turmoil and violence. There's a whisper of peace. It's as if God himself is reaching out, offering solace to the weary and downtrodden. These aren't just dreams of escape. They're visions of a brighter tomorrow beckoning us to believe in the impossible. So let's dive into this journey together, not as mere spectators, but as fellow travelers seeking meaning in the midst of chaos. Let's open our hearts to the possibility of miracles, knowing that even in the darkest of nights, there's a flicker of hope that refuses to be extinguished. This isn't just a story. It's a journey of the spirit and you're invited to be a part of it. Miracles. Those unexplainable moments that defy logic and inspire all have long been woven into the fabric of religious belief. They're not just occurrences. They're glimpses of the divine reminders of a power beyond our understanding. When we pause to contemplate the wonders of the universe, we're met with a profound sense of humility, realizing that there's more to life than what meets the eye. Miracles beckon us to look beyond the mundane and embrace the extraordinary. Consider this. Amidst the chaos of our daily lives, there are countless miracles unfolding before our very eyes. From the miracle of birth to the beauty of a sunset, these everyday wonders remind us of the sacredness of existence. Each breath we take, each beat of our heart, is a testament to the miraculous nature of life itself. Yet in our relentless pursuit of worldly success and material gain, we often overlook these miracles, blinded by our own ambitions and desires. But if we pause for a moment and open our hearts to the possibility of the divine, we'll find that miracles are all around us, waiting to be discovered. These everyday miracles remind us that we are not alone, that there is a higher power watching over us, guiding us on our journey through life. And now, against the backdrop of conflict and despair in Gaza, a new miracle has emerged. It's a story that defies all logic and challenges our understanding of the world. Jesus appearing in dreams to hundreds of Muslims offers a glimmer of hope in the darkness in a region torn apart by violence and hatred. These miraculous encounters offer a ray of hope, reminding us that even in the darkest of times, the light of God's love still shines brightly in the heart of the Gaza Strip a land plagued by conflict and strife. The suffering of civilians is a daily reality. With each passing day, the toll of violence and oppression weighs heavily on the people, leaving them trapped in a cycle of despair. The Israel-Hamas war, which erupted with devastating ferocity, has brought untold suffering to the people of Gaza, with thousands killed and many more injured or displaced. Amidst this backdrop of destruction and pain, a glimmer of hope has emerged in the midst of the chaos and despair. Reports have surfaced of miraculous visions experienced by Muslim individuals in Gaza. These visions, described as life-altering encounters with Jesus Christ, have left many in awe and disbelief. According to accounts from underground Christian ministries, more than 200 Muslim men have reported experiencing visions of Jesus in their dreams, leading them to embrace Christianity. These remarkable encounters defy explanation, offering a ray of hope in the darkness of conflict and despair. As the number of reported visions continues to grow, so too does the sense of wonder and amazement among those who bear witness to this extraordinary phenomenon. As we explore the profound implications of these visions, it becomes evident that they resonate deeply with biblical prophecies about the end times. In the book of Acts 2, 1, 17, it is proclaimed, In the last days God declares, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. And these visions of Jesus appearing in Gazamir, the biblical accounts of divine intervention during times of great upheaval and turmoil, they serve as a powerful reminder of God's presence in the world and His promise to bring about redemption and renewal in the midst of chaos. The transformative power of these visions cannot be overstated for those who have experienced them. They represent a profound turning point in their lives, a moment of awakening and spiritual renewal. As they grapple with the reality of Jesus' presence in their lives, they are compelled to re-examine their beliefs and embrace Christianity as their faith. Indeed, the impact of these visions extends far beyond the individuals who have experienced them. They have sparked a wave of curiosity and interest among the broader community, prompting many to seek out answers to questions about faith and spirituality. 
In a region torn apart by conflict and division, these visions offer a glimmer of hope. A reminder that even in the darkest of times, God's light can shine through. As we delve into biblical teachings about the end times and the establishment of God's kingdom on earth, we encounter a wealth of prophetic insight that sheds light on the significance of these extraordinary events. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 24, Jesus himself foretells of his second coming, proclaiming, For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. These teachings emphasize the imminence and inevitability of Jesus' return, reminding us of the need to remain vigilant and prepared for the day when He will come again to establish His kingdom on earth. In the book of Revelation, John describes a vision of a new heaven and a new earth where God will dwell among His people and wipe every tear from their eyes. In the midst of uncertainty and turmoil, we can take comfort in the promise of Jesus' return and the ultimate triumph of God's kingdom. It is a promise that sustains us in times of trial and inspires us to live with faith and perseverance in exploring themes of resurrection, judgment, and the ultimate triumph of God's kingdom. We uncover profound truths that speak to the core of human existence. The Bible paints a vivid picture of these themes, offering hope and assurance to believers amidst the trials of life. In the Gospel of John, chapter 5, Jesus declares, Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear His voice and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to live, and those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. These words remind us of the reality of resurrection and the promise of eternal life for those who have placed their trust in God. It is a hope that transcends the limitations of this world present world and offers solace in the face of death alongside the theme of resurrection the bible also speaks of judgment the righteous judgment of god upon all humanity in the book of revelation chapter 20 john describes a scene where the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books this depiction underscores the importance of living a life that is pleasing to god as our actions will ultimately be subject to his righteous judgment it serves as a sobering reminder of the need for repentance and obedience to God's commands. Yet, amidst the reality of judgment, repentance, the Bible also proclaims the ultimate triumph of God's kingdom. In the book of Revelation, CH 21, John envisions a new heaven and a new earth where there will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain. This vision of the future speaks to the hope of all believers, a hope rooted in the promise of God's redemption and restoration. It is a hope that sustains us in times of trial and tribulation. Amen. Reminding us that God's kingdom will ultimately prevail. Contemplating these biblical perspectives on end times and salvation, may we be encouraged to live lives of faithfulness and obedience, knowing that our hope is secure in the promises of God. For in Him we find peace, assurance, and the ultimate triumph of His kingdom. Thank you for watching. May your name always be on Jesus' blessing list. Amen. If you like this video, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring the bell to receive notifications about the latest videos from our channel. And please leave your comments and suggestions below in the comment section, and don't forget to share this video with your friends. We appreciate your support and hope to see you again in the next videos. Have a great day and see you soon.